welcome Ms. Julie Klaus. I have always been um, sort of, or, or at least when I was younger, sort of equal parts pretentious and neurotic, uh, especially when I was in high school. Like, I remember coming back after one summer, I guess it was my junior year of high school, um, deciding I was going to be a beatnik. And I would wear like a black beret and I had like a copy of Howl and I would carry like a clutch purse and I'd wear a black turtleneck even though it was September and um, smoke clove cigarettes. But at the same time, underneath the black turtleneck, I would wear those like little uh, wristbands with the acupressure point here because I would get nauseous constantly and so those were like a good remedy for them. Um, and, uh, and, and I was very homesick growing up. I, I went to summer camp and I would write letters home every day as though I was like journaling uh, back to my parents saying, uh, pick me up, you're, you're all, you're, you're horrible people, I miss you so much, why did you put me here? Um, which they still use in arguments to make me feel guilty and it, and it doesn't work because I uh, resent them to this day. Um, but uh, when I got to college, uh, zero social skills, and I remember at the same time, you know, still being lofty and uh, wanting to aspire to whatever, like, um, you know, when pretentious people are like, well, the Europeans do it better, or like, oh, the Europeans are more civilized than, like, Americans, or, or whatever it is that, I don't even listen to them. I assume they say things like that. <laughs> so I had an opportunity to go on this trip between uh, freshman and sophomore year to spend a month in Italy, and the only reason why I agreed, because I was terrified of traveling, getting on a plane, going far from home, all of it. Um, the only reason why I agreed to do it is because my friend at the time, Maya, was gonna come with me. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll try this, you know, it's like, when are you going to get a chance to go to Europe for free? Um, and my attitude about Europe at the time was sort of like, have you, you guys seen that Woody Allen movie where like Owen Wilson plays Woody Allen, right? And, and, he, and he's like, and he's like, oh, it would be great. You guys like my Owen Wilson impression? Oh, it would be great to uh, be an artist in the 30s in Paris. <laughs> You do like it, okay, good. <laughs> um, and, uh, and you're like, oh yeah, being an artist in the 30s in Paris, it's so romantic unless you're a Jew and then it's like the 40s in Paris and then you have a whole other movie. But, um, uh, but, but, but in this movie, like Carla Bruni is in it and she has this line to Owen Wilson where he's like, oh, you guys keep mistresses and wives. That's so evolved of you. And I remember I was in the theater and I go, ugh, really loudly. Because <laughs> the idea of like cheating on your wife is like a really evolved concept, whatever. Anyway, I have issues about Woody Allen. Um, so, uh, so at the time, it was between, I guess, my uh, freshman and sophomore year, and um, so I and I and I go to Italy, and like I said, terrified to fly, terrified of, of absolutely everything. Um, I brought with me, uh, do you, I don't know if they, I guess they still sell them at like Dwayne Reed, like those little um, like pellet dispensers of Equal that like you you keep in your purse. And they, they like, you, you like press this little like blue plastic button and like a little pill of like artificial sweetener goes into your espresso. Like this is the kind of traveler I was and I would like keep that in my fanny pack. <laughs> so, so, I, so I go and it ends up being fine. It ends up being not only fine, but beautiful and fabulous. But at the same time, I'm like, and so part of me is like, oh, I should be this kind of, you know, world traveler and like cafes and salon and just, you know, exchanging ideas. And, and, but part of me also has to carry a little like, you know, piece of paper written out in Italian, I am allergic to nuts and like hand it to the, so. <laughs> So I, I'm not going there in like the most sophisticated kind of way, and um, and I and I also it, it ended up being like wonderful and fabulous and, and really fun. And even though um, you, you know, I'm trying to think of like a cool way of saying this, but I was like uh, really horny, um, <laughs> and uh, but but I wasn't into like European men. So there'd be like guys in the square would be like you know buena sera, and I'd be like uh huh, and then I'd like fuck the guy at the hostel from New Hampshire who had like like like. Shirley Temple, like perfect ringlets, and like the smallest perfect, like not perfect, but just like these tiny balls that were like, um, like a, like a cocker spaniel. They were like, pink they, anyway, it was a, it was a thing where I, sh I, if I could go back and do it again. So, um, so by the end of the trip, um, Maya and I end up in Rome, and we are, um, and by the way, Maya, by the way, not that she's like, you know, Miss Cool anything, she had a Ziploc bag full of equal packets that she would take along with her, and once we were like, you know, 
I've got packets, and I'd be like, I've got pellets, and then we'd both say, we've got equal, who can ask for anything more? I mean, it, in retrospect, it's shocking that that guy from the New Hampshire with the balls even fucked me, so... Um, so we're in Rome, and we go to the Vatican, and that's the thing that you do. You do the tourist thing, and, and you have to dress very conservatively. So I was wearing like you know a long skirt and, and covering up everything, and I had my fanny pack, I, I, and I did not look good, um, which I mentioned because. I had the first instance of something that, in retrospect, I was afraid of or should have been afraid of because um, we went to the Vatican. It was fine. <laughs> it, was, it was very nice. It was a nice ceiling. Um, you know, there, there's ABC Carpix if you want to, like, please. It was beautiful. And, um, and on the way back, we're like, oh, I have an idea. Let's take the subway. We'll be, like, local. So we take the, the you know, the, the, the Italian equivalent. I don't know what it's called. The, the, we'll just call it the subway. And we are underground, and there's this long, um, I guess it's, like, the equivalent of, like, when you're transferring, and there's, like, this tunnel. And we are, uh, you know, schlepping through, and we've got our stupid, we look terrible. And then out of nowhere, um, these two guys, Guys, sort of like uh, they, they come up from my left, and one is blonde, one is brunette. We'll say one looked like um, like Matthew McConaughey, just like a blonde uh, romantic lead, and then the other we'll say looked like Christian. But now I'm making it sexy. Um, <laughs> um, and they come up from my left, and the blonde guy pinches my rear end, and then they keep running, and they're laughing like jackals. And I realized I'd been, it was like a, a drive-by goosing. And I didn't, even, before I even realized what was happening, I felt like energy course through my veins in a way that I didn't know. I, I mean, everyone has adrenaline, but they say like fight or flight, and my instinct was flight. And I just chased these two Italian men um, who were laughing as they ran. And I don't know what I expected would happen when I caught them, but I just ran after them. And I was seized with outrage, like, how dare you? I look terrible. What are you thinking? <laughs> um, and, I, and I finally caught up to them, and they were, they were still laughing, and, um, and, and, I, and they didn't speak English, and I guess they knew I was an American tourist. I don't know what could have possibly given it away, but he, um, the, the guy who pinched me was like smirking at me, and I was like, you know, shaking my fist, and then he pointed to his cheek, and he made a kissing noise. He was like, <laughs> and um, without even knowing what I was doing, I, I spit on the part of his cheek uh, that he pointed at, and that's when things turned into a silent movie. That's when, like, it was like a very dark Buster Keaton movie um, because we were all, we were communicating in gestures. So it was like, point, spit, and then he slapped me across the face. And I'd never been slapped before. And I don't even remember feeling the, the pain of it as much as I felt the shock of it. Because I, all of the, all of the um, flight turned into fright, and I just sort of froze. And then the next thing I knew, um, a, a, a horde of uh, Italian old ladies surrounded me, and we started walking in a huddle the way like the, um, the, way, like, the Peanuts kids move, like when they're going like <laughs> across the frame, or like dirt around pig pen, or, or whatever it is. Um, and, and these old Italian ladies, one took one hand, one took the other. They were not gypsies, thank God. Gypsies, by the way, I know this is going out to like iTunes on the record, they are filthy and they are scheming. But um, <laughs> go ahead, send me an email. Send me an email, um, Romani peoples. Um, they were not gypsies, thank God. They were um, older, they, they were like these little Italian ladies, and they're holding both of my hands and they're like gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. Um, you know, speaking, speaking to me in a language I do not understand. And they, and they are all wearing black, and I'm like, seriously? Yes, apparently, central casting got a hold of these women. <laughs> So um, they lead me. They lead me toward um, the, the square. Then we're, we're above ground now, and um, and then they 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 move to this um, like police uh, trailer in the middle of the square, and they put me in the trailer. And then I, I, I assume that they were telling the. Of course, they were telling the police what happened. What were they like? You know, shooting the shit. No, they they told the police like. This guy basically slapped her, and um, and, the, and by then Maya had caught up to me, and I was sitting there, and the police, uh, somebody explained to me that they were waiting for a translator, and I shouldn't leave until they got a, a translator present. And, um, and, and, and then it was like all of the anxiety that I had dodged up to that point became, like, like this is why you don't leave the house kind of stuff, where you're like, 
you know, it, no way had I ever thought that this would happen, but at the same time, my, my stomach is like, I told you this would happen, and then, um, and then Maya's like, calm down, it's all fine, everything's good. And then finally, I guess it, we were there for like 45 minutes, but it felt like ages, and then a translator showed up, and, uh, and then the, like, you know, said what the police were trying to communicate to me, and goes, don't leave the hotel, because the man wants to uh, murder you. <laughs> so, um, crystal clear, worth the wait, really, when you think of it. So, um, so, so yeah, so guess who didn't leave the hotel that night? Me. And then I, um, I, I went back to the States, um, and everything sort of went back to its own, like, I, I guess, like, ground level of anxiety slash pretension that, to this day, I, I carry with me, um, you know, like a, like, a, like a beautiful balance, right, in the fanny pack of, of this. And I'm pointing to my heart, for those of you who can't see. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>